Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. We only noticed that there was one head in the passenger side. You explain to me everything that's going on with this son of a bitch right here. I've had video proof for the past two months of the crap that you've been doing. No, 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 no. From Cheater Surveillance Cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. I just can't take the lies. I know this is upsetting. You met the same young lady. agency's private eyes on cheaters hello i'm joey greco thanks for tuning in to another installment of cheaters please welcome philip rhodes the deeply concerned husband with questions about his wife's monogamy with his family's future in the balance philip entrusts cheaters to provide assistance in this delicate personal matter philip rhodes age 28 a salesman worried his wife's supposed friendship with a co-worker escalates each passing day. You know, things have been pretty rough for us the past few months. Uh, she's been distant. You know, we don't carry on, you know, nice conversations anymore. She's got a quote-unquote friend, guy friend at work, and she goes out to eat lunch with every day comes home, talks about him every single day. You know, did this, did that. You know, and never once asked me, you know, anything about my day, how I'm doing, how I'm feeling. Her and that guy at work are text messaging each other all day, talking on the phone. You know, of course, she erases her text messages, so I have no idea, not that, you know, you know, if she didn't lead on that there was something going on or I should be worried about it, then, you know, I probably wouldn't be suspicious. Basically, I'm looking for, you know, stability in this relationship, somebody that I could go home to and know is going to be there and somebody I could talk to about my day and, you know, plans that, you know, we plan on doing in the future. And I haven't been able to find that with her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Crystal Rhodes, age 22. An insurance secretary unwilling to offer her own shady behavior the proper risk assessment. Investigation day two. Cheaters operatives receive an inside tip revealing the suspect's exact location. Minutes after arriving at the workplace of suspect Crystal Rhodes, Cheaters agents spot her in the parking lot with her infant child. Suspect Rhodes casually banters back and forth with a large, unidentified gentleman. After taking a closer look, Cheaters sleuths observe the fellow cradling a precious little puppy. Revealing his generosity, the companion promptly hands the pooch to suspect Rhodes. Evidently unconcerned with doggy breath, Suspect Rhodes leans down to offer the adorable little fellow a few kisses. Rhodes' companion takes advantage of the picturesque moment as he grabs his camera phone to capture the cuteness. Suspect Rhodes quickly shuffles the child and the puppy into her vehicle to share a little alone time with her companion. Before departing the scene, Suspect Rhodes gives her companion a big hug, prompting inspectors to further question the nature of their relationship. Investigation Day 5. 
Cheater's PIs catch a lucky break at lunchtime and observe suspect Rhodes speaking with her companion, whose identity is withheld. With confirmation that the two are co-workers, Cheater's agents watch carefully to verify the status of their relationship. Up to this point, a notion of innocence prevails as the couple hops into the same vehicle and prepares to leave their place of employment. First stop, a nearby gas station to get some snacks and fuel. Then the trouble begins to brew. Cheater's agents follow the workmates to a secluded area next to a recreational park. Cameras zoom in on the black sedan, and Cheater's PIs determine that this relationship indeed exceeds the boundaries of mere friendship. With time slipping away, suspect Rhodes and her lover race back to work, where they receive reprimands for tardiness. The couple returns to the entrance after engaging in a steamy lunchtime nooner. Investigation Day 8. While in search of further evidence, Cheater's inspectors return to suspect Rhodes' workplace, only to be thrust into a roadway pursuit. Rhodes and her companion return to the same park where several indiscretions took place just days earlier. Savoring the precious moments together, suspect Rhodes and company dive right into action without coming up for breath. Meantime, suspect Rhodes believes Philip to be evidently quite naive, as documented in this recorded telephone call. Hello? Hey, baby. What's up? Nothing. Well, are you going to take off and go get lunch here in a minute? Um, uh, uh, that's cool. We got anything planned nice for this evening, or are we just kind of chilling? I don't know. Do you want to try using that sausage or whatever tonight? I'll <laughs> get some uh, barbecue sauce, too. Oh, my God. I'm afraid I'll get sick. I think it'll be okay. Um, let me give you a call back in a minute. Dad's calling. All right. Love you, babe. Love you, too. Bye. With enough evidence to determine guilt, Cheater's team of operatives reconvenes at headquarters. Coming up, the confrontation. Confirming the extramarital affair, Cheaters delivers all details to Philip. Concerned with the future of his family, Philip anticipates immediate answers from the investigative team. Philip, thanks for being here this afternoon. Uh, not a problem. Would you be interested in finding out what our detectives were able to uncover? Oh, absolutely. On this particular day, our detective caught up with your wife. This was shortly after you had lunch together. Well, she went by her office, was met out in the parking lot, by this gentleman, which I'm assuming is the gentleman that your friend may have spoke to you about. Yeah. Okay. On this day, we again were able to catch up with your wife and the same gentleman outside of the place of their employment. They sit down, share a cigarette, and after a while, get into her car, and then our detective was able to follow them until they went to a park. We only noticed that there was one head in the passenger side. We weren't certain if that was just circumstantial or not. On this day, our detective followed the two of them as they left work. Now we can see that there's a large mass that's sitting in the driver's side, but the detective did stay there, and shortly thereafter now, we can see that that large mass was actually two heads. That's enough. I'm gonna call the detective right now and just see if he can give me an update. Gomez, what do you have right now? All right, so she hasn't come out yet? All right, we'll be on standby. Good. Okay. We have detectives on location right now. They haven't left the building yet. As soon as there's any movement whatsoever, they're gonna call us. Until then, we're just gonna be in standby, okay? We'll move into a better position, and then we'll just be on standby, all right? You ready to go? Yeah. Come with me. Yeah. They are at Burger Street? Okay. Let's go. All right, I see you. Okay, stay on the phone and leave me in. Get cameras in. 
help slow down the car. You explain to me everything that's going on with this son of a bitch right here. I've had video proof for the past two months of the crap that you've been doing. You honestly think that you could come into my family and f around with my wife? Do you think you have that ability? No, oh, hey, 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 no. You're f with my family. You ever look at me, you little son of a bitch. And for you doing the... Oh, we're just friends. Both... What do you have to say about yourself now? I think it's time to go. No, it's not. We're not going anywhere. This is bull... You talk to me. Where the f*** do you get off doing this with my family? I've got a daughter. I've got a house. I've got a mortgage. Do you give two s*** about what I care about? Apparently not. To be honest, I care most about her and her Why? Why? Wait, wait, wait. Because we have become friends. She has been there to perform me through everything. And we through, through what? Everything. Through what? Through a child? Were you there at the delivery room when we were having a baby? Were you there walking down the aisle with us when we devoted ourselves to one another? Were you there? Coming up, the conclusion. Were you there walking down the aisle with us when we devoted ourselves to one another? Were you there? I'm talking about her being she's been there for me. And you're just giving it up freely, like it's no big deal to you. You know, we had our problems. Now we've got bigger problems because you've been lying and I've got video proof that you've been cheating on me. You f***ed up on everybody that's given a damn about us. And you know what? You involved our daughter in this now. The question is, if you were unhappy, Don, what kept you from saying, Philip, I'm unhappy? I told him that I was unhappy. And Whether you or not you were listening. Now, why, why are you coming home every night? Because I still pay half the bills. All she was looking for was something outside of our relationship emotional-wise. And he gave it to her because he preyed on her vulnerability. It's real simple. He knew that she was pissed off. He knew she, she was unhappy. That we'd been working through our problems. And you preyed on that. And you took advantage of it. You took that advantage of my wife a long time ago. Son, you've only been working there a couple of months. Don't even tell me a long time ago. She didn't know you before you started working there. I think it's time to go. No, 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 I know you're upset. Hey, don't worry about our child. She's taken care of. I've already made arrangements. So relax, relax. Step back. Watch him. Watch him, Walter. Watch him. No move, the van. We say no. Philip, no. Hey, let go. Let go. All you care about is what you get. No, no, no. Come on, man. You're better than that. It's not worth it. It's, it's not worth it. Listen to me. No. Hey, Philip. Let's get you. Come back. Come back. Come to the van. Daniel, I just confronted your daughter. I've got video surveillance proof that she's been cheating on me. Just wanted you to know. I, I want to just tell you one thing. I am sorry whenever my daughter tells me that she's not doing anything and that everything's a purely platonic relationship. I'm sorry I believed her. Daniel, so. I... I... I had to do this for myself, and I did not want to lead on that I had been watching her. I didn't want it to be blown. I wanted to find out for myself, and I knew today that I'd be able to do it. And you know what? I'm not doing this to hurt you or your family. But when she can't, when she can't be honest with me, and she basically hey, turned turned her back on everybody, I, I had I no choice. I got news for you. I back you 100%.
So I've, I've got to go. I've just got to let you know what's going on. I caught her. I busted her. And I'm sure you're going to hear from her. Do you still think that there may be a future for the two of you if she does agree to counseling? I want to lead by example for my daughter and prove to her that not everybody in this world is bad. There are good-hearted people out there that actually care for other people. And I, and I know there's, I know, you know, physically and emotionally, there's another person out there for me that I'll be able to find. I'm not worried about that. But what I want to concentrate on is making sure that my daughter's taken care of and that she doesn't get mixed up with her mother's infidelity and lifestyle. After the confrontation, Philip considers his options before deciding on the fate of his marriage. At the end of the show, Cheaters details his final decision. But now, please meet Vaini Ariza, a woman caught red-handed cheating on another woman's boyfriend. Vaini comes to talk about how her assumed relationship was ruined. Vaini Ariza, age 24. Vaini takes us through her illicit experiences and expresses regret for her part in the affair. Nothing came to my mind when I saw the van, so I was just, because the parking lot was empty, I was just thinking somebody was coming in. But, you know, they came in really fast, so it was like, I think, three seconds of thinking, what's going on? And then I saw my cousin in the van. What are you doing? You couldn't tell me you were with him, Bjarni? Don't, come on, don't come up to me, Bjarni. You stupid trying to act like you're my cousin I admit that I did do something wrong, but not to a point to call cheaters on me. But yeah, I, met, I messed up. I did mess up and I apologize to her for that because I did have a lot at fault. But he did too. This is not, you can't bring all of this down on me. This is your overtime? No, we're gonna do it now. We're gonna do it now. You didn't Wait, you need way to fix this. You're gonna talk to me about it. You wanted to act hard. Why did you just call me or something? Why did you? Because how was I supposed to know you were with him? Was that more fun for you to be sneaking around my back with him? No, but you're supposed to get married. Okay, if, okay. If we were supposed to get married, why are you with him? Later on that day, actually, that night, I had called her. I thought she was gonna start ignoring my phone calls, but she picked up. And then I went to my aunt's house, well, to her house, like, really late. I think it was, like, almost 2, 3 in the morning. And then we talked then. I, we just went ahead and, I mean, because I knew that if we ever had a get-together or something like that, or, like, family get-together, it was going to be a lot of tension, and it was just going to be, like, a big family war. You didn't think about the baby? Well, I guess I did. I was like, I was always like, there's nothing you can say no, no, to fix it anyway. Y'all two deserve each other for being so damn stupid. If I knew what made a relationship work, I wouldn't be in this situation right now. I wouldn't be here. But you know, everybody learns from their mistakes and I guess this is just gonna build up on me working on something better. Contemplating several options, Philip Rhodes now says he will move forward with divorce proceedings. With all trust shattered, Philip implies that there is no sense continuing a relationship after discovering an affair. Surprisingly stoic, Crystal Rhodes says that Philip brought this upon himself by offering minimal emotional support during a difficult time. Ms. Rhodes does compliment his efforts as a father, but says she simply cannot live her life with a man who is unable to show affection to his wife. Shocked by Philip's temper, Ms. Rhodes' companion says that he was caught off guard when ambushed at the restaurant. He refuses to discuss any particulars in the case, stating his interest in remaining anonymous.
Now remember, if you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I know this is unpleasant, and I know this isn't what you hoped for. They've been followed to a bar. I see him on the right. You see him? You got busted. Boy, you're there. Hey, don't be touching me, man. I, I just, whatever. Man, do you think you're hard? From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. I just can't take the lies. I know this is upsetting. No! agency's private eyes on cheaters hello i'm joey greco thanks for tuning in to another installment of cheaters please meet cesar villafuerte a distinguished young man worried that his girlfriend is seeking attention elsewhere protecting his sacred values cesar asks cheaters to investigate the woman he once trusted cesar villafuerte age 30 an insurance adjuster worried that his girlfriend is being led astray by the sweet smell of money. Moving in together was a big challenge, and the, the reason being is because she comes from a very, like I said, religious family, and so do I. And we knew that doing this, we were going to incur a lot of obstacles, um, a lot of feedback from my family, her family. You know, they, their thing is, no, you can't leave the house until you're married. Um, considering that she's a bit younger than me. Um, just, just a few things that were against us. Uh, but at that point, I really didn't see that because, you know, I fell in love with this girl. And to me, that was just stronger. And I felt that, you know what, we're going to prove everybody wrong and just go on with our lives and, and take it from there. I can't even ask her where she's going because she gets upset. Um, you know, she'll show up whenever she feels like showing up. Uh, it could be two, three in the morning, and here I am, not necessarily uh, suspicious as to what she's doing, but more like worried about her, if she's safe, is she going to be okay tonight, is she going to come home alive, you know, that kind of thing. I do believe in God, and if, and if this is the case, and if she is doing me wrong, um, I, I just know he'll get me by but it's also going to be on me as well you know it's going to be how i feel and and if my heart's going to heal basically if you suspect infidelity in your relationship cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance exercise your right to be informed brandy salazar Age 22, a cashier suspected of fielding offers from an assortment of well-to-do bachelors. Investigation day three, cheaters operatives dispatch a team of agents to the residence Caesar shares with the suspect. Several hours into the stakeout, cheaters PIs lunge into action when suspect Brandy Salazar emerges from the couple's apartment. Suspect Salazar takes to the road and later stations her car in the parking lot of a ritzy condominium high-rise. Salazar makes a cell phone call and soon greets an unidentified man near a magnetically secured door. 
Trouble stirs as suspect Salazar seems more than friendly with the mysterious character. Cheater's agents remain vigilant and watch suspect Salazar and company enter a big fancy truck. Once on the road, suspect Salazar's companion speeds excessively to a local shopping mall. Suspect Salazar uses flirtation like an expert, smiling innocently and feigning interest in what her companion has to say. After the short drive back to the companion's residence, suspect Salazar takes the initiative and invites herself inside for a nightcap. Hours later, she reemerges from the building and finally heads home to Caesar. Investigation Day 6. Cheater's intelligence directs all surveillance agents to suspect Salazar's apartment unit. Many hours later, Cheater's PIs close in on a silhouette that emerges from the darkness. Cheater's mobile units begin a pursuit of suspect Salazar. Several miles away, she ends her journey at a bowling alley in an upscale side of town. Surprise, surprise. Her companion, now identified as Joel Hinojosa, sneaks up behind her in an attempt to be cute. A startled Salazar gives her charming companion a nice big kiss in exchange thereof. Once settled in, the two chat for a while before gravitating over to the video games. Full of energy, Salazar and Hinojosa finally leave the entertainment center, smiling all the way to the parking lot. But this night is just getting started. Cheater's agents stay right on their tail as they move on to a nearby cocktail lounge. Ready to throw down a few, Salazar and Hinojosa take a seat at the bar and order up some libations. In return for his generosity, companion Hinojosa happily accepts affection and adoration. Hinojosa later picks up the tab and ushers suspect Salazar back to his luxury SUV. A short time later, the couple arrives at the bowling alley where suspect Salazar left her vehicle. The two part ways for the evening after companion Hinojosa says goodbye to his sweetheart. Investigation Day 14. In position at the couple's apartment, Cheater's PIs are shocked to discover that suspect Salazar has invited companion Hinojosa to stop by for a visit. A while later, the duo emerge from the apartment and depart the complex. Several miles away, cheater sleuths close in on the pair as they pull into a restaurant famous for tasty chicken wings and scantily clad waitresses. Suspect Salazar apparently believes her silver tongue is foolproof, as indicated in this phone call to her boyfriend, Caesar. Hello? Hey, babe, what are you doing? Nothing here, watching TV. Hey, well, I called her to know, um, my sister, she's feeling kind of sick right now, so I'm gonna stay home and watch her kid. I'm not gonna be able to make it home tonight. So... What am I supposed to do for work tomorrow? I was going to use your car. Well, just rent a car. Rent a car? It's too late. It's, it's already nighttime. I don't know what to tell you. Well, you need to tell me something because that ain't fair to me. Well, look, I'm already almost here at her house, so I need to go. Uh, you know, I tell you, you that's messed up that you're doing me this way. That's fine. I'll see how I can get a ride. Bye. With all avenues exhausted, Cheater's agents back it in to examine the surveillance footage. Coming up, the confrontation. With evidence proving the suspect's lack of self-control, Cheater sends an urgent wake-up call to Caesar. Steadfast in his desire to know the truth, Caesar collects himself before discovering the outcome of the investigation. Caesar, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, we appreciate your time and attention. Well, I know that you've been waiting for some time to find out what our detectives have been able to compile. Are you ready to take a look at some of that information now? I'm ready. Okay. On this day, Caesar, we had investigators that were stationed outside of your residence. They observed Brandy leaving. She was followed to a condominium complex. The gentleman came down. They meet, embrace one another quickly. They get into his car and are followed to a mall. After going inside and making some purchases, they leave, drive back to his residence. She goes inside. After spending some time inside, comes down and departs for the evening. On this evening, 
the gentleman that she has been meeting up with did come to your residence and pick Brandy up before he took her to a restaurant where they exchanged some spicy items on the menu. And after dinner, they did return to the residence of this gentleman as they were walking through the common area. There he discards a cigarette, which bursts into flame as they're sitting down. It's put out, but yet when they walk back, there are other fires that they seem intent on fanning the flames on. I know this is unpleasant, and I know this isn't what you hoped for. We've accomplished one part of what we've set out to, which was to at least get you the information that would enable you to make some decisions for yourself. The second thing that we can provide you with is an opportunity to ask Randy face to face. I, I would definitely like that because she's never seen the side that she's going to see with me tonight. I'm going to get on the call the detective right now. Yeah, we just finished up with the briefing. We have two ground units. They've been followed to a bar. We'll just head your way right now. God help me. Okay. All right, we're on our way. You ready to go? Yeah. All right, come right this way. This is the location where the detective wanted us to stage. As soon as there's any movement, he's just going to call us. We'll sit here until that happens. Stand by. They're out? All right. Got us in. Go. I see him on the right. You see him right there. What's going on? Brandy? What? I'm what Joey Greco with Cheaters. Huh? You got busted on your day off, huh? You got busted on your day off. Hey, don't be touching me, man. Don't are be you, touching me, don't, don't yeah. be touching me. This is her boyfriend. What the hell are you doing? Together. You're going to leave with him? Huh? No. I want all you out of the house. All of it. Everything. Sit there at home, not work. How am I supposed to pay? You're the what? one that always wants. You're, you're never home. How the? Because I'm working for your ass. That's why. That's why. Coming up next, the conclusion. Supposed to pay. You're the one always wants. You never use home. How the? Because I'm working for your ass. That's why. It's funny or what? Put your face on camera. Sir, uh, we apologize that you're involved in this because we know hey, this wasn't on. your intent. Hey, if you can help us fill in the blanks, we appreciate I'm it. I'm at her job. I'm at her job. So what's up, man? What's up for what, dude? Man, we've been together over you. We live together, dog. Yeah. Well, hey, dog. Oh my God, man. I, I just. You know what? Just for real, when you get home, get all. Leave. I ain't even kidding you. For real. Hey, no. hey don't judge no. my truck, no. man. Hey, I'll knock out of this truck, okay? No, you think I can't pay for this or what? Huh? I don't think you can. Uh, I, can't, can't, oh, I can't pay for that truck? I don't think you can. Or she would be man, talking to me. I'm just not stupid enough to spend money like that on the truck. Uh, whatever. When you got it, you got it. Yeah, all right. Whatever, dog. Yeah. Whatever. Man, do you think you're hard? What's up, man? Guys, let's settle That's down. Right. Settle down. That's all right. There are no answers there. So oh, he's the best kind man. of guy you're messing with? Man. Damn alcoholic driving around with Just beer. Stop. No, beer. man, I'm ready to settle down. Hey, you might be driving that Escalade, but give it six Shut months, up. be taking the bus. Hey, yeah, yeah, be taking yeah, the bus yeah, yeah, six like months that. with her. See if you can afford that. Yeah, See if you can afford that. Whatever. Stop oh, pushing me. Am I touching you? Okay. Then get back off. Then get away from me, OK? Listen, I know you. I know it's an emotional time, all right? But, you know, that's not the answer. Get in or get out, it's that easy.
gone. If you agree to have a conversation with him, if you agree to talk to him, I'll see if I can get him to agree to drive you to wherever you need to go. Okay, stay here. Right now, this is a time where you have an opportunity to get the answers and the resolution that you need. Okay, have the conversation with her. Now, she's going to be honest with you. What's your family going to say, Miss Church Almighty now? Huh? What's your dad going to say? You know, your dad and I get along pretty well. What do you think he's going to say? Do you think he's going to believe me or you? Obviously, he's going to believe me more now, huh, since the cameras are in your face. Yeah, because you made me look like a whore. Well, you know what? Maybe because you are one. Well, guys, let's not go down that path. Hey. And you already answered what I needed to know, and that's fine. Obviously, I wasn't man enough for you. I wasn't spontaneous enough for you. And that's fine. I can accept that. But all I ask, in your future relationships, at least if a man is going to treat you right and do everything for you, show him some respect. Following the confrontation, Caesar professes his gratitude to cheaters. Coming up shortly, Caesar relates his plans for a new future. But first, Cheaters welcomes Rob English. Rob comes to Cheaters to discuss how an indiscretion changed his life forever and for the better. Rob English, age 30. Rob explains his part in the case and clarifies how his philandering ways led to a trip down the aisle. I mean, Lacey, we're at the restaurant. We're eating, having a good time, having a nice night out. We're getting ready to leave the restaurant. We saw the vans pull up. And then suddenly all the, you know, all the guys came out with the cameras and and uh, at that moment I kind of realized, you know, what was what was going on. What's going on, Lacey? Lacey, what is it? No, you, you, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, break your up, fellas. Break it up, break it up. She just met this guy who was just a sucker and agreed, you know, you don't have a job, just come live with me. I'll pay for everything, I'll take care of you. You know, if you can do a couple things around the house or whatever you can, that's fine. And uh, that was fine with me. She was being taken care of. How did your ex-boyfriend get back into the picture? He moved away, and he moved out of state for a while, and he came back a few months ago. And, I mean, you know, me and him been off and on, you know. I tried to get on the bus, get out of there, get as far away as I could. He wanted to follow me on the bus. He wanted to start calling names. Um, he got, got my anger moving a little bit, my adrenaline going. So that's when I felt like if he wasn't going to go away, I was going to have to do something to make him go away. But you're going to go, man. They're going to kill each other. All right. No, we don't worry. We're not going to let that happen. You forget your little girl? show. I know initially he told her to leave. He wanted her to move away right away. She was glad that it happened because she was, you know, she didn't, she wanted him to break it off being the, kind of the nice person she is. Um, but then he, you know, he changed his mind. He wanted to try to work it out, but she felt like finally, you know, it was time. She got it out in the open. He knew what was really happening. So she just packed up and, and went right away. I do still love you, but I don't want to be with you anymore. Uh, since the show, me and Lacey, we got married. We're deeply, deeply in love now. There's absolutely no doubt that we're done with the, the breaking up and getting back together and, and having boyfriends and girlfriends and stuff like that. Um, there's absolutely no confusion about what we're going to do with our life and, and where our future is going. With emotions still running high, Caesar Villafuerte remains certain that he will not entertain any possibility of reconciliation with Miss Salazar. And he's now involved with another young woman. Even after receiving numerous phone calls from his former girlfriend, Caesar still refuses to speak with her and has deleted over 30 messages of what he labels pathetic attempts to justify her actions. Brandy Salazar confesses that she had a good thing with Caesar, but believes that she has come to understand what she wants in a boyfriend. Brandy apologizes to Caesar and is very grateful to him for helping her grow as a woman. Understanding that she has her choice of guys, she prefers a relationship with a more affluent fellow, 
As for his involvement, Joel Hinojosa admits offering Miss Salazar gifts, but says he receives extra special favors in return for his generosity. As Mr. Hinojosa puts it, nothing in life is free. Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. I don't have to explain what's going on to you. She's with one of the gentlemen that we observed her with on two of these days of investigation. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm here with a friend. I've had them following you since November. From Cheater's surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. I just can't take the lies. I know this is upsetting. agency's private eyes on cheaters hello i'm joey greco welcome to another episode of cheaters please meet greg stevens a family man growing weary of his wife's late night antics hoping to salvage over two decades of marriage greg contacts the professionals at cheaters greg stevens age 48 a sales rep worried that his wife no longer honors the sanctity of their marriage. Now, we had a, a good marriage. You know, had its ups and downs, job changes, and expenses grew with the kids. But uh, we got a house, our first year of marriage. And uh, we were in it for uh, about 17 years before we bought this big one. We had a custom-built house built. And... Um, just a normal marriage, you know, ups and downs. She started working at the ballpark, suite attendant. And then all of a sudden, I noticed her starting to get, well, she started wearing thongs. And then she started doing the full body tan. And then the game would be over 10, but then she wouldn't get home to two or three. Then uh, she'd call me up and say, oh, out uh, having drinks with the girls. Maybe I'm wrong. So I said, well, let's just find out, because she's made the statement several times. Have somebody follow me. They'll show you I'm not doing a thing. You know, you're going to feel pretty stupid. So I'm like, OK, since she's always popping up saying that, I figured I'd have it checked out. You know, and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, you know? And I'll shut up. But if I'm right, then I'm going to have to wonder, the whole 27 years I've been accusing, have I been right? If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. I 
identity withheld, age 44. An usher suspected of leaving her family in the dark concerning her late night avocations. Investigation day three, cheaters inspectors dispatch field agents to the home Greg shares with his wife and three children. After several hours, investigators finally spot the suspect as she prepares to leave for the evening. Cautious in their pursuit, Cheater's PIs tail the suspect to a popular country and western bar. The adventurous wife and mother waits in her car for several minutes until a dark sports car arrives on the scene. Wasting no time, the suspect, whose identity is withheld, humps right into the unknown vehicle. Mobile units maintain their position at the dance hall for several hours. As the evening winds down, Cheater's agents watch as the mysterious sports car approaches. The suspect exits the vehicle and walks to her awaiting SUV. But this time, an unknown gentleman assists her to her vehicle. Not willing to let the party end, the unidentified fellow gets a little fresh as the suspect playfully declines his drunken advances. Realizing that on this particular night, his pitch will be met with some resistance, the unknown gentleman finally retreats for the evening. Greg's wife returns home, where she douses her husband with more lies. Investigation Day 7. Cheater's intel notices activity outside the Stevens' home, and shortly after sunset, stationed field agents spot the suspect slowly backing out of her driveway. Several miles up the road, her journey comes to an end at a low-profile restaurant and bar. As if late for a date, the suspect rushes inside and takes a seat at the bar right next to an unidentified gentleman. Cheater's PIs press on to determine the exact nature of this relationship. It doesn't take long to conclude that these two are more than just friends. The suspect leans over and smooches with her delighted companion. After enjoying their cocktails, the suspect and company head for the parking lot, each advancing to his own vehicle. But evidently, the evening's action is just about to begin. Cheater's agents follow the couple several blocks away to a local motel known for its discreet accommodations. Accompanied by her male companion, the suspect disappears behind closed doors for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 11. Determined to compile ample evidence, Cheater sends out mobile units to follow the suspect just after she leaves her residence. In a matter of minutes, she arrives at a parking lot where an unknown individual in a familiar vehicle awaits her arrival. Recognizing the sports car from day three of the investigation, Cheater's sleuths remain vigilant as the suspect parks her vehicle and hops into the gentleman's automobile. After a lengthy pursuit, the suspect and her companion pull into a popular night spot. The suspect and her companion, whose identity remains withheld, take a seat near the busy bar and amorously begin carrying on. Meanwhile, Greg is treated to endless fabrications from his beloved wife, as evidenced in this recorded phone call. So, you going out tonight? Just depends. I'm not going to like go out now. If I did, I'd just go have a few drinks. He's pretty stressed about things lately. And she's like coming out of beer with me, so. Who's going to have a beer at? Her place? Oh, I thought we were just going to go sit in the car. She can't yeah. go in them, you know. There's not too many places in front of her. We find places that will. She just wanted me to bring a couple beers out of the refrigerator. Well, no, if I did, I would be out late. Probably like midnight or something. Can we visit him? I'll see you in with infidelity confirmed many times over, Cheater's intelligence ends the investigation ready to present their findings. Coming up, the confrontation. With clear evidence of betrayal caught on tape, Cheater's prepares to disclose all findings to Greg. Vexed by his wife's disquieting behavior, Greg sets forth to discover the motivation behind her lies. Greg, thanks for being with us tonight. Are you ready to take a look at some of the information that our investigators have gathered? Yes. <clears throat> Greg, on this day, we had a detective outside of your home. They were able to observe leaving. She was followed until she arrived at a bar. 
After exiting the vehicle, she enters the bar, and after quite some time, is seen leaving and getting into the car of a gentleman. They drive off. The detective was not able to keep up with them at that point. He stayed at the bar where she left her vehicle. When they returned, this gentleman dropped her off. There was a moment or two before she got into the car. They each went their separate ways from that standpoint. On this day, again was observed leaving your home. She was followed until she arrived at a bar where she's met by another gentleman. They're sitting inside sharing some drinks. I don't have to explain what's going on to you. After some time, they did leave that bar. They each got into their own vehicle and were followed until they arrived at a hotel. <sighs> On this day, Greg, again was followed until she arrived at the same bar that she went on the initial day of the investigation. She's met outside by a gentleman. They were followed to a bar, shared some drinks, were followed back to where she left her car. This gentleman gets in to the passenger side and then goes around and gets into the passenger side as well. And after quite some time, he's seen exiting and she gets into her car okay. and they each drive off. Now I know, Greg, these are things that you kind of suspected that were going on. We've done one of the things that you've asked us to, and that is find out what is going on behind your back that you weren't able to but we can also provide you with something else. And that's an opportunity to confront face to face and ask her what her intentions were. And is this her idea of trying to work on your marriage together? Would you like to do that? You sure would. Okay. okay I'm just gonna check with the detective and find out what their exact location is. Gomez. What do you have? Okay. We're loading up right now. We're headed over. All right. Okay. They're in the bar. They're just there having a beer. They've been there about 30, 45 minutes. You ready to go? Mm -hmm. All right. This way. Go, miss. Take a left on Orn. All right. Bail out. Come out this side. That's it. Yeah? I got you get in the back of her truck. Don't be tight. Get over. Get away. 
bike for me, I swear. You drive the Eclipse? Yeah. Okay. So here's one day. Uh, this is when you dropped her off, brought her back to your car. This is when you guys went into the back seat. Where's she? Where'd she go? What she do? Just totally ran? She's behind one of the bars. Over on Greek. One of the bars. Uh, I need one. We got one camera with her. Let's try and let's try and track her. No, I'm I'm going home. I'm going home. You can pick it up and move in with whoever. Let someone else support your ass. If you cared about your family, you wouldn't have been around. Nope. If you cared about your family, you wouldn't have been around. You made your choice. You made your choice. Sleep with it. You want to talk, get a lawyer. Can you please just tell me how I'm supposed to get home? Can you come Your boyfriend. Here? Your boyfriend. Please here, just come here. No, your boyfriend. Your boyfriend gave you a ride home. You can get a ride back to his place. right I ain't doing that right constantly grilling me only to find out in the evening she goes and have fun with someone else from this point on you know you'll be going forward alone save your family save from your family but at least with a different set of circumstances mm -hmm. what's going to help you continue I'm just gonna keep working hard and Providing for my kids. After the confrontation, Greg weighs all options before deciding what to do with his fractured marriage. Stay tuned as Cheaters announces his aspirations for the coming months. But now, Cheaters welcomes back Will Montgomery. Will voluntarily comes on down to speak candidly living the day he was confronted by cheaters. Phil Montgomery, age 24. Will explains his theory concerning one of the most embarrassing situations in his life. I'm not married, you know. I've had other women before her anyway, you know. But it's just the fact that my girlfriend never found out about those things. And this time, I got caught. What's going on? What the f are you doing? I'm working out, man. Doing what? Working your mouth? I just bring you like putting rain. hands on booties now? To be honest, we had an exclusive relationship. I mean, we lived together. You know, that's, that's pretty close. Uh, she had talked about getting married before, you know, and me being a man, I went along with it only because she was my girlfriend and she's been taking care of me you know, for the last several months. So I was basically just living a lie. You giving her money? You giving her my money? Are you listening? Will, do you hear me? Will, don't roll. What the hell are you doing? Where the that go? After it all started, after I was sitting up in that tree, I pretty much knew it was all over. Uh, there were several cameras out there. I know I've seen cheaters before. I didn't expect for her to stay with me after everybody seeing this and maybe her friends telling her this and telling her that. So I basically knew that it was over. So we 10 now, we want to climb I'm tree? I'm tired, man. You, don't feel like doing this. If you want to run up a tree, you wouldn't be tired. Can you come down and talk? Will. Let's get, oh, I'm let's sorry. get some room. All right, let's back off for a second. Uh, look, look, look. Damn Say, me. man, I don't know already. I don't look at all these people out here. What? You look worry about me, camera people. Why are you up in the tree? Why did you just be honest? When you think about it, everything happens for the best. You know, don't nothing happen that's not supposed to happen. She kicked me out, but now I'm, I'm on my feet. I found me a job. I'm working. She not paying my bills no more. I'm paying them. You know, I got me a place. 
I've moved on. I haven't necessarily talked to her to see if she's moved on or found someone else or anything, but I'm young. I mean, there's gonna be other women out there. I'm not, I'm not tripping on that. With many things to consider, Greg Stevens says his number one concern is to end his marriage in the most cordial manner possible. Even though he believes his children will initially suffer from the breakup, Greg knows that ultimately everyone will benefit. Keeping the conversation short, the suspect in the case admits her culpability, but says there's much more than just one side of the story. She declares that over time, Greg became distant and focused most of his time and effort on the children. The suspect's companion maintains that a woman like Greg's wife needs to be held up on a pedestal. Despite her marital status and family obligations, he invites Greg's wife to share his company anytime and has no remorse for his actions. Remember, if you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money.